Good morning, everyone. I hope you can hear me loud and clear. Um, my name is Natasha, as you could all see from the uh, board here. Um, um, I hope you all had uh, as interesting weather as it, we did last week. So um, actually, um, in, instead of uh, discussing today's weather, which is not so very nice, foggy and, and rainy, uh, I would like to start with the situation from last week. Uh, my idea was actually to start uh, with the situation from last week. But before that, as, as I see that there are a lot of you today, um, could you could you use this image just to, I hope you see where it is in the world, just to put a star where you are so that we can, can maybe somehow focus on, on your region. Nice. <laughs> exactly the region which was of uh, very much interest last week. Um, okay, thank you for this. Uh, as as uh, you those of you who are forecasters, you, you probably know that we had a very interesting situation last week uh, with, with uh, on one side a uh, lot of precipitation, on the other hand uh, we had some very serious freezing, uh, freezing rain and, and different stuff. But let us start from the beginning. Uh, the situation was actually caused by this, um, I would say, superposition of these two systems. Uh, one was uh, a big uh, deep low over the Atlantic which in the center had a pressure um, if, if you can read the, the lines here you would see that we had uh, below 950 hectopascal pressure in the center. On the other, on the other side uh, above Siberia, above Russia, we had a, a, a high with a pressure above 1050 hectopascal. So on a, on a I would say, rather uh, small distance, we had a difference in pressure uh, over 100 hectopascal. This is not a very common situation. And this time, this situation caused some severe weather, at least over Western Europe. If we move on, uh, so if we look at, at first this, at this image, we would see that uh, there was quite nicely developed row here uh, with a frontal system uh, which was consisting of a cold front here, let's say some warm front occlusion, very, very nicely developed. Uh, and actually uh, this system was moving towards Europe uh, within a few days. I will show you uh, the movement in a minute. Uh, what was also very interesting that some very cold air was coming behind this front. As you can see, this cold advection was very well pronounced. Um, as the system started to move towards Europe, I will show you the images slowly so you can see how it progressed. Uh, it entered uh, the, the western coasts of, of Europe on uh, 14th of December. So actually on 13th it was still over the sea. Then it moved a little bit closer and on, on the 14th in the morning it caught up with the coasts of um, Portugal uh, and Great Britain and also the westernmost parts of France. You can nicely see in these images here the jet from the Airmas RGB, you can see that there are quite dense clouds within this frontal system. So there was definitely uh, some precipitation here going on. Um, when it moved across Western Europe, again, it, it brought some precipitation to the uh, parts of Western Europe. You can also nicely see here behind the cold front, um, development in the cold air, so small convective clouds building up here in the cold air behind the front. And again what you can see is nicely developed, this jet uh, with rather dry air which in the air mass RGB is uh, marked with this uh, reddish colors. 
as the front moved on, it reached uh, Central Europe uh, in the morning of the 15th of December, but now we are still on 14th, 12 UTC. and 18 UTC, uh, then it started to reach Central Europe. I'm, I'm concentrating on Central Europe because on 15 December we had some very s uh, serious situation, I would say all along this frontal zone uh, over Central Europe, so all along this region and, and progressing towards the east, there was uh, a rather cold air in the lower layers and the rain that came uh, above was um, was was actually the, it was not snowing but it was raining which is quite a serious situation in the winter I will show you just in a minute uh, there was a lot of cold air progressing as you can again see from this from this uh, cumulus clouds building behind the cold front what you can also see here that there is a I would say occlusion like thing building up here. You will see it later on in a in a cross section. And then this this was this is now dissipating. This is now already afternoon on the fifteenth. And you can see that the front is slowly moving to the east and dissipating. So this uh, situation somehow dissolved on, on 16 December. Uh, I'm sorry, there was a star here. Yeah, could be polar lows. I did not analyze this uh, this polar things up there. This were not very much interesting uh, for for us for the weather in Central Europe. We we can go back to the situation of the 15th December. This time I have chosen the image at 12 UTC, but the situation already started in the morning. So actually, what was going on was this cold front passing over Central Europe. Um, actually, although the clouds seem the most uh, serious here over, over the region of uh, Mediterranean, I would say, or Adriatic, actually the, the most serious situation was going on in this region here. Uh, this seemed to be quite low clouds. Uh, however, the, the problem was that uh, it was quite cold in the low layers. Uh, and then there was a layer of uh, warm advection going on above that layer. If you look at the precipitation, you will see from the precipitating clouds product that there was quite a lot of precipitation in this region. So this was the region with a lot of precipitation. Also the region here within the frontal zone. Uh, the region uh, where we saw the high clouds, this one, was not having, uh, was not experiencing so uh, so much precipitation. So actually, the most serious part was was the one over Central Europe and especially, I would say, Austria, Czech Republic, Slovak Republic, and Hungary. These were the regions where the situation was most severe. The point was actually uh, this. If you look at the precipitation so from from Synop stations, you would see here that we had quite a lot of precip pre precipitation exactly in the region where the precip precipitating cloud product showed that the precipitation was most intense. Uh, as unfortunately, this image is rather, rather blur, so you don't see that um, uh, the two meter temperature was either around or below zero at that point but the rain was falling, not, not snow. So actually what happened was, uh, was that if you look at the analysis of 2 meter tem temperature, you would see that all around this region, which was, which was of interest, temperature was around zero and a little bit below. And uh, because of that, we had quite a serious situation. This is uh, actually a forecaster's, a forecaster's nightmare because you never know whether you will get snow or the temperature will get a little bit below zero and then you will get freezing rain which is a far more uh, dangerous situation than, than snow. Um, I will just briefly show you this cross section here. 
uh, because it nicely shows this cold advection and, and the warm advection thing. Uh, if you look closely at the frontal structure in this image, you will see that it, it starts to uh, resemble the occlusion or some, some kind of uh, low center building up here above the alpine region. If you look at the cross section which I have marked, you will see that also the um, isentrops point to the uh, to the shape which is typical for the I would say occlusion or, or uh, center of some kind of a low pressure. So actually, there was some kind of small uh, low pre low pressure center building up. But what is important in this image is that you have uh, this. Uh, Apart from cold advection due to the, the frontal zone, which is here in the upper layers, uh, and, and here this cold front, which you could nicely see, so this thing here is uh, this on the left-hand side of the image is building up in the cold air behind the front, and this is actually the warm front. What you can see that in, in the lower layers, where you had this situation, you had some warm advection. And because of that warm advection and the cold uh, air which, which was still persisting on the ground, what you got was, was this. This is the sounding of uh, the station Praha, so in Czech Republic, on 15 December at 0 UTC. And you could very nicely see this very dangerous situation. So you have you have um, temperature at the ground quite, I would say, far below zero. It's it's almost minus eight degrees at the ground. Whereas in this in this quite uh, high or quite uh, dense layer here, you have temperature which is above zero. This is uh, this layer was, I would say. If you look at the height, it was below uh, some something like 700 and 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 almost 2,000 meters. So it was quite thick layer of temperatures above zero. And what happens in this? And if you look at the next uh, uh, radio sounding, which which was at 12 UTC, this situation was a little bit better. But still, you had temperature at the ground which was below zero. And you still had a layer of, uh, let's say, warm air uh, aloft, which then caused the freezing rain. If you look at the, I would say, sketch of the freezing rain sounding, then you see that this is exactly what happened below, uh, above Central Europe. So actually, you have a layer of warm air aloft and a layer of cold air very close to the ground. What happens is that snow falling down melts into rain here in this layer of warm air and then falls down as ground onto the free, onto frozen surface and causes freezing rain. The result in Czech Republic, actually there was a, a mail in the Meteor Alarm mailbox from the Czech colleagues which said that on Saturday, so this was the 15th, they had one to seven millimeter of freezing rain with very serious situation, a lot of injured people. And uh, as they, um, as the surface temperatures remained very low and there was some additional rain coming, they issued the orange, uh, orange warning for uh, freezing rain. So actually it was quite a serious situation. Um, so this this was the situation that uh, happened so in in days before. Uh, this is the situation from this morning, and uh, why I'm showing this one, although it is not so very interesting, there is not much uh, to see at the image except for another low building up here over the Atlantic, quite nicely. So this is a situation which will become. Well, which which looks very similar to the one that we had last week, we still have this very very intense high over Siberia, with temperatures which are very very low, and I believe that the colleagues in Russia 
will have one of the, the coldest uh, coldest Decembers that they experienced. It, it looks quite serious there with the temperature. Um, in, in the Central Europe and Mediterranean the situation uh, looks summer-like. Actually yesterday uh, we had some very serious convection here along the coast with some hail uh, precipitation of like 60 liters in, in two hours and, and some very serious convection which actually resembled uh, summer convection. Um, unfortunately I didn't manage to uh, get the images on time uh, but there was some quite serious overshootings uh, developing in the convection over the sea uh, and the coastline which is not very typical for winter time. Uh, this situation is now looking quite similar to the one that we had on 13th December. So actually it is developing in the same manner. We have now the low here and the frontal system over the Atlantic and here uh, very deep, uh, very uh, high, uh, very pronounced high over Siberia. The pressures, however, are not that low. So actually in the, in the, in the low center it is now um, around nine, 980 hectopascal, whereas the high has still a pressure 1045. Uh, if you compare uh, the, the situation at 500 hectopascal, uh, you will see that the low is very well pronounced also in high levels. And now, if you, sorry, the text is missing, but never mind. So the, the right hand picture shows today 6 UTC, so the latest image. You can see uh, here the low developed over the Atlantic, the high over, over Siberia. Uh, it is now uh, again reaching pressure of 1050 hectopascal. Uh, if you compare this to the situation on 13th December, you will see that it is quite similar. Uh, the difference now is actually that the forecast, Im forecast um, ECMWF forecast uh, shows that this front will move uh, in the direction of, uh, let's say, the Mediterranean or Southern Europe, but actually it will um, disappear or dissolve before it gets there. Whereas this front here was moving as a quite um, serious cold front all across Western Europe. This is a bit different situation and um, we hope that it will not be as serious as it was last week. So if you look, this is the same image, sorry. And, and now uh, today's situation, so what we have here on today's situations we have uh, over Central and, and Eastern Europe not so interesting uh, situation with mostly uh, low clouds, uh, some precipitation, but not very serious. As I said, over Siberia, some very cold air. Also low clouds and fog uh, persisting uh, for days now over this region. And frontal system uh, here, some warm front occlusion, cold front here. So actually uh, quite nicely developed frontal system moving in from, from uh, the Atlantic. Uh, what uh, what I also wanted to show you in the end is this nice Ascat image. This is not always so nicely uh, that you find um, so many passes over uh, the Atlantic which, where you can see the winds. And here you can see how high the winds are here in this region of occlusion cloud band, so quite uh, high uh, wind speeds in this region. This is this, is this. so actually uh, we will we will be watching on the situation that comes up, but as I said, the forecasts uh, are not very serious about the situation over Western Europe, since this front will uh, somehow dissolve before it hits Europe this time. This is all from me. I know uh, that Andreas has has few words uh, to say about this, some other situation. Yeah, thank you, Natasha. Um, I have prepared a few slides on a situation um, which occurred in the last in the in the last night and the previous last night from Sunday 
to Monday from 16th to 17th. Uh, okay, but I can comment on the loop um, before I start with the first slides. Um, the situation on which was so remarkably for me were the um, vertical stripes. I will mark them. I hope it works also on the loop. You see them here in this in this region uh, south of of the Pyrenees, um, crossing the Iberian Peninsula and moving then towards the east. So I try to erase this. Okay, it works. Um, um, propagating towards coming from the Atlantic, propagating over the I northern part of the Iberian Peninsula, and then moving on towards uh, Tunisia. So uh, this is the water vapor image. They are obviously very high clouds, so in the jet level. And this is known as a clear sign of, of um, turbulence in upper levels. Turbulence induced by, by the jet. Again, that's me from Zang. I'm working in the satellite department. And what I wanted to show you in five minutes, but probably it will be a bit longer, uh, are pattern, turbulence pattern from visible in the MSG water vapor image. Um, this is the situation at midnight. And again, I already showed the loop. But again, I can show you here the, the area where I wanted to, to point your attention. These vertical stripes in very high levels. If you go to the situation on your on your in your office and look at the water uh, and the infrared image, for example, you will see similar patterns in much lower levels. These are often trapped lee waves or lee waves due to elevations of the orography. But this heat phenomenon here is clearly a phenomenon from high levels in the jet level, as I as I have already explained for the loop. This is this is uh, from Christopher T. Cool, and and thesis work. It's called studies in forecasting upper level turbulence, and this vertical cross section cross section shows you quite well where you ex can expect um, turbulence, clear air turbulence, uh, in the atmosphere. Here you have the jet. It points out of the image, and you have above from it uh, two zones above. One zone of clear air balance, turbulence and below clear, another zone of clear air turbulence. This is the, are the areas where the clear air turbulence happens, mainly due to the shear uh, of the wind speed. Uh, so I have prepared um, before is yes, first thing which we are going to look at is the, the jet. We have the jet axis here. I will mark it. And we are here on the warm side where we expect the clear air turbulence and we are here on the cold side. So I go back to to the schematics. We are here on the warm side, here where I put the star, and the cold side is on the opposite side. And the clear air turbulence is on the warm side if we have here the front, the front frontal zone, and the clear air turbulence is on the warm side. Exactly like in the situation we have it here on the Sorry, now I have the right, right image. Um, in the satellite image, we have the jet and we have the uh, clear air turbulence here on the warm air side. But um, in fact, it's not clear air turbulence because we see clouds. We see um, vertical stripes, stripes oriented perpendicular to the um, current of the air, air, of the jet streak. So it's the zone of clear air turbulence, but we see some clouds, so it's not really clear air turbulence. Why do we see turbulence here in the satellite image? So um, let's have a look in the vertical cross sections. I choose two vertical cross sections from ECMWF, but they are very coarse, but it's enough for our purpose. One from Barcelona and one from Toulouse. What do we see? We see what we expect in higher levels. Uh, I put a star here. The potential temperature indicates a very stable layer. Um, the wind speed below 
shows a strong increase in the vertical. That means we have a strong wind shear. The wind direction in the uh, lower right side shows no change in the direction from the ground to the higher atmosphere. And what is most important, we have a very dry zone around 500 hectopascal and in the jet level in 300 hectopascal we have very humid air. So it's nearly saturated around 90, 80, 90 percent relative humidity. And the same situation is valid for Toulouse. It's stable in the upper le levels, upper levels of the atmosphere. The wind shear is quite strong. The wind is increasing with height. The wind direction does not change and we have even more uh, relative humidity in higher levels. So that is the reason why we see the clouds. We have high humidity. Um, turbulence is characterized by vertical motion of the air and we have this wave-like pattern which forms from, uh, from the turbulence. So um, I also wanted to show a vertical cross-section to confirm our image. Uh, I found the, the yellow, uh, no it's not, not yellow, it's, it's magenta pink vertical cross-section which crosses the uh, Pyrenees and the northern part of Spain. Let's have a look in this vertical cross-section. What you can see here is the frontal zone. I will mark it here. We have the warmer side here on the right side and the colder side here. Uh, and the is isotacks are marked and showing uh, the the axis of the jet, the maximum of the wind speed here in 300 hectopascal. We have also in green indicated the cloud cover, but if you go to the e-port and compare the water vapor, the real water vapor image with the pseudo water vapor image, you will see that the situation is not, not very well um, uh, reflected in the model fields. Uh, concerning the humidity. You do not see the vertical stripes, you just see some cloud fibers. The real water vapor image shows much better the situation and also the vertical stripes which are not visible neither in the infrared uh, pseudo image nor in the water vapor pseudo image. Uh, another cross section I prepared shows the humidity, the relative humidity and here you can clearly see the high values of humidity in upper levels and this is the reason why we can see turbulence. The vertical motion leads to condensation of the air and the wave-like pattern is reflected in the clouds, clouds which form in the very high levels of the atmosphere. So, and the last slide I wanted to show you is a turbulence forecast, it's from the from an American site, turbulenceforecast.com. Uh, it shows the situation over Spain uh, in this region at 6 o'clock in the, in the morning, 6 UTC. I asked this, the people from this page to provide me with earlier image. Unfortunately, they are not saved, so we have the situation only um, six hours after midnight. Uh, at the end of the loop and this corresponds to the pattern which have flown from from the Atlantic over the pen peninsula to Tunisia and we have at 6 UTC the, the remains of the pattern over Tunisia in this area which is also here marked as a potential turbulent area. I would have liked to see the, this forecast for zero UTC, but unfortunately I could not get the image anymore. But still, this region shows some turbulence um, in the axis of the jet streak. So I thank you very much. Thank you, Natasha. Thank you, Andreas, for the interesting uh, briefing. Just to let you know that the briefings will continue next year. The next briefing will be on 24th January. It will be made by Christina, our trainee here at UMETSAT, and uh, I will assist her. Thanks for this year, thanks for taking part on all these briefings this year. Uh, 
I've been happy to see that the number of the participants has steadily been growing. Today we had 25 sites connecting. I think that means more than maybe, maybe more than 40 people because in many places there are more than just one. So it looks good. Let's continue with next year also. Thanks. That's all from me. And bye.